Hi everyone, it's your girl Regina with Side Hustle Cream Crafting and Vacationing. Today I'm working off camera again. I'm giving y'all a DIY of the Scrabble wall decorations. I've been working on it all week while, you know, when I get off of work. So I know you guys been seeing the progress pictures. So I'm going to show you guys today on how it's done. Hopefully within the next few months, we can get back to my cruising tips. But until then, I'm going to continue to give y'all some DIY projects that you can do right from the comfort of your own home. So the first thing you're going to need, you're going to have to go to Amazon and order you some of these five by five wooden squares. So I got 50 of these for $16. Um, I was able to do five, no, six names out of these squares and I still got quite a bit of them left. So this was a really good buy. Now, if you do not have a Cricut or some type of cutting machine like a Silhouette or the Cricut Joy or the Cricut Explorer, you still can do the DIY subscriber letter wall art because some of you can some of these um i bought my squares by themselves but i seen where they sell them with the alphabet um template so if you don't have a cutting machine make sure you get the five by five wooden squares that come with the template that way you <clears throat> each template is a different level so when you get ready to do your squares you can put the template right onto the square you can grab you one of these little sponges from the dollar tree you could grab you some of this 99 cent paint you can get from Walmart, um, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, Michael's, anywhere this paint costs only 99 cent. And you put the template onto the square with a little bit of paint and you paint over the letter, pull the template off and you'll have your letters right on the square. Now I have a Cricut Explorer, so I just printed out my letters but again if you don't have a cutting machine you can still do this project just make sure you get the five by five wooden squares that come with the template so that you can paint on your scrabble letters and you can grab you any color paint from one of the um crafting stores or even right at walmart for 99 cents just get the color that you want okay so with my squares with my scrabble letters i stained my squares because um, my living room is more like a dark brown, beige-like type color. So I wanted my wooden squares to have the, the aged oak um, color. So um, I already had some gel stainer inside my closet. I actually got this from Hobby Lobby for $7.99. I used a 40% off coupon that you can just have on your phone or you can print out before you go to the store. And I got it for less than $5. And I used it for a couple of projects. So it was perfect. I already had it for this project. Now stainer can come like, this is more of a gel stainer, but you can just get regular stainer. They even have stainer wipes that you can get. But only thing that I suggest when you buy your stainer is look at what color you buy because um, stainer do come in light gray, dark brown, beige. They come in different colors. So you want to make sure you get the right color. Don't just walk in and see stainer and grab it because you um, is buying a color. They do come in colors. Again, for my this little Dollar Tree brush, when I got ready to stain my squares, I just used one of these. Um, they come like five in a pack at Dollar Tree, so I always have them around for different projects. Make sure before you start this project, you map it out because um, I actually mapped it out. I did this project with my hubby, and we mapped it out at least 10 times before we actually got it right. So you're going to need a pen and a piece of paper for this project because you want to map it out before you get started, okay? Um, for the people who use a Cricut or a cutting machine, Artsy, this is where I got get my vinyl from. I know, I know a lot of times when I be in different crafting beginner groups, they always say where you got your vinyl from. I actually bought this pack of white. I bought a pack of black. I bought a 50 pack of different colors and a 50 pack of different color holographic over a year ago. And I'm still using this vinyl. I still got a lot. And I do a lot of different cups and a lot of different glasses. So I do have the little Cricut slicer so that I won't be using extra vinyl, just wasting vinyl. So I was, I'm able to conserve more of my vinyl. I'm just not finna buy a new pack of the um, holographic because um, I use a lot of the holographic. That This is holographic vinyl that's on this cup that I made, Side Hustle Queen cup. Um, the holographic is like really, really popular, especially when you're doing holographic glitter cups and stuff like that using epoxy. So I'm just not running out of my holographic paper with certain colors and it's been over a year. 
So you're going to need a set of gloves because you're using stainer. I always recommend safety first because sometimes when you're using chemicals and stuff like that, you don't know how it's going to affect your skin. I mean, I have really tough skin. Most of the time, none of, none of the stuff really affect me, but I do still use gloves. So you want to make sure you got you some gloves always handy. So I'm going to show you all how to stain your blocks. Now, I did see some people and some other crafting groups who did this project they just got the squares they just got the template and some paint and they just painted their letters on and they just left it this plain color um i didn't really like this color so i wasn't going to use this color but i have seen this color being used with painted on black letters or letters that was black letters that was made with a cutting machine and it really looked it nice it's just that this wasn't my color so i wasn't going to use it so I'm gonna take my handy little sponge and I'm just gonna cut the tip off just cause I want like a little square. Cause like again, my stainer is gel. It works the same, it's still a stainer. It's just a gel, it's just easier for me to get inside of the jar. So basically you just wanna get the stainer onto your brick. And because it's a gel, you just wanna make sure you even it out. And this sponge works perfect for this project. Now for custom orders, I probably will stain both sides just for look purposes when it get to the customer. Even though most of the time this grab a letter DIY is gonna go on the wall so the back is not gonna show, but just for sort of look nice for custom orders, I probably will stain both sides. But for mine, I'm just staining one side. I don't really care how the back look because it's gonna, that part is gonna be on the wall. Nobody is gonna see it. So if I, you know, touch my glove and then touch the back with the stainer and the stainer get on the back, I don't care about that because it's actually going on the wall. It's gonna dry, it'll be dry when I put them up. So I don't have to worry about um, what the back look like because ain't nobody gonna see the back. It's gonna be on the wall. So I always make sure I get all four corners of my square. And then just even it out. Just like that. Because you don't want no, you don't want it to dry with no um puddles of stain, stain in no way. So I just evens it out. And normally, because I already done stained all my bricks for this project, normally I usually have another brick right here to dab some of the extra stainer off while I'm just making sure that it, I don't leave no puddles. That way, you know, just to keep, so the brush should be more drier. I just dab, dab the extra on the other, the next brick that I'm doing. And that, there you go. Less than a minute, a minute or two, and you got your brick stained. Okay, so now that we done stained our bricks, we let them dry. And um, normally I did, when I did mine, I did about 12 to 15 at a time. I went to work, let them dry while I was at work and, you know, came home and added the levels. But for picture purposes, we're going to let that dry. And I'm going to show y'all with a square that's already dry how to apply your levels. Again, if you don't have a cutting machine, Get the template and you're going to paint on your letters. I'm not going to demonstrate how to paint the letters on because I don't have no templates because I have a Cricut machine. But you can buy the template. You can lay the template right on top of your squares after they dry and you can paint your letters on. Okay, what I did was my first, the first letter that I printed, I wanted all my letters to be the same inches off the square when I put them on the next square. So it kind of, you know, make it look good. So what I did was I measured out my tape that this side of the tape right here is the same amount of inches from this square, from the P, from the edge. And I just left that piece on there. So when I come with my new square, I just lay it right here, side by side, and I lay that down. So I know, I hope you guys can see that. I think, so that way I know exactly where to start my letter. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide, let me slide some of this over so you guys can see a little bit better. In the camera, okay, there we go. 
So the, the tape going to tell me that's my inch away from the corner. So every time I change a new square, I just take this one off, put the new one on, and I don't have to keep measuring an inch off the square. You're going to need a ruler. Now, I've been using this ruler for over a year. You could grab this ruler right from the Dollar Tree. It's the L-shaped ruler. I use it for just measuring three inches off the top when I do my shirts. Uh, vinyl measuring. Uh, you can use this ruler for a lot when you're doing craft, crafting projects. So, you might want to grab you one of these rulers while you're at the Dollar Tree. It's a must need for different crafting projects. Like I said, I've been using it for a while. The next thing, when, if you're going to be using letters that you cut with your Cricut, you want to get you some transfer tape. A lot of people buy transfer tape to use with their Cricut off the do from the Dollar Tree. I bought this transfer tra tape from um, Amazon over a year ago, and I'm just halfway through. One thing about transfer tape you can reuse it over and over again. Now, what um, I've been using the same transfer tape since I started this project. I just keep reusing it until you can't reuse it no more. That's all. That's why the transfer tape lasts so long. I already weeded the letter S. I already weeded it out. I did that off camera. If you need to know how to do weeding, if you're brand new with a Cricut, and you need to know how to do weeding, just leave me a comment below and I will do a video on how to weed the easiest way. Just leave me a comment on what y'all want to know and I will share it with you guys. That way you won't have to be going to three, four different channels trying to find out how to do different things, how to use your Cricut, what supplies do I use, things of that nature. That's the reason why I wanted to do this group because I was tired of seeing people in different groups asking questions and nobody wasn't answering. Okay, so the way the ruler come in, the play is, and because it's an L shape, it worked out really, it worked out really good. So basically what I do is, I put my ruler right at the bottom of the P so that my letters will be all at the same point on, a, on each square. So it won't, because if you don't measure it out, some of your letters will be too high, some of them will be too low, so it won't look really nice when you put it on the wall. So I just measure it out, make sure that my P and my next letter is going to be exactly the same length. I take my transfer tape. I already measured an inch out from the corner. I lay my S down, remove my L-shaped ruler, my Cricut tool. If you don't have this Cricut tool right here, you can always use a credit card. Uh, this was actually a Cricut one. I don't know where I got this one from. Probably Joann's or something like that. But they have a lot of um, off-brand ones that work exactly the same. But you can actually use just an old debit card or old credit card to do this. You peel your transfer tape off. I be trying to make sure that I'm in camera so you guys can see what I'm doing. There you go, you got your letter S. Okay, one of the things that I do do is take a little bit of Marsh Posh, put it on the corner. Do I have a brush? I don't have a brush on the table, but um, put a little bit of Marsh Posh onto your square, lightly brush over your decal, let it dry, and you don't have to worry about it going nowhere. So, that's how you make your Scrabble letters for Scrabble DIY. Make sure you map map it out before you even get started so you'll know how many squares you need to make, what all letters you need to make, and everything. And you can get to work. It's just that easy to make your squares. Um, I hope you guys um, learned something from this video. Learn how to do you, your little Scrabble squares. Uh, if you have any questions, just make sure you leave them in the comments. I'm going to get my Scrabble squares up on the wall later on today, and I promise you I will post you a picture of my Scrabble DIY wall project. So I hope you guys learn how to do Scrabble letters. Thank you, guys. See you guys next Sunday when we jump into another craft project. Bye, everyone.